Hi everyone, welcome back to the Hair Loss Show. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about telogen effluvium, so stick around. Welcome to the Hair Loss Show. Dr. Russell Knudsen and Dr. Vikram Jayaprakash discuss issues relating to hair loss and the medical and surgical treatment of hair loss in both men and women. Hi, Dr. Vikram Jayaprakash here, and in today's episode we're going to discuss telogen effluvium. And it's a condition that we commonly see, a lot more common uh, than really uh, is sort of been discussed. So what is telogen effluvium? Well, telogen effluvium essentially means shedding of hair. And it can be quite significant, and you can shed up to 50 to 100 hairs uh, per day. And it can actually be quite perturbing, because every time you run your hands through your hair, you might feel that you're, you're shedding hair. Now, this is different to uh, androgenic alopecia, and can sometimes be confused with each other. So what, what causes telogen effluvium? Well, essentially, there, there are a lot of, there's some common causes, and it's uh, things like stress, uh, low iron levels are also commonly associated with it, thyroid issues, and also certain medications that people uh, take. So if we look at it and in, as two entities, sort of androgenic alopecia and telogen effluvium, well, androgenic alopecia is a very separate condition. It, 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 it's a genetically mediated condition. It's predictable in the sense that it has a certain pattern, hence why we call it male pattern hair loss. For some people, it starts at the front and moves back. Some people, it starts at the back and moves forward. So you, and it's, uh, the hair loss occurs not suddenly, but through miniaturization over each life cycle of that hair. Telogen effluvium is different. It's actually more of a widespread condition. So you can lose hair over a widespread area, the top of the scalp, the back of the scalp as well. And when we look at that, we do something called a pull test where we will apply a little bit of traction force on the hairs. And if we feel that a certain number of hairs come out, that's probably what is uh, indicative that the, the patient has this condition called telogen effluvium. And it is a clinical diagnosis. We don't normally do biopsies to, uh, to assist with this. Now, for most people, the treatment for telogen effluvium generally, generally is trying to address the cause. And as you can see from the list, the, the brief list that I've got here, and this is by no means comprehensive, it's actually, uh, they're quite generic in, their, in, in what causes. So stress could be emotional stress, it could be psychological stress, it could be physical stress as well. So people go through a shedding phase, for example, if they've had a prolonged illness, for example. So uh, one of the things that we talk about when we manage people that have uh, telogen effluvium or TE is that, all right, well, have a look at your lifestyle. Have a look at the factors in your life. And are there any of these factors contribute, potentially contributing to this condition? And if that's the case, then trying to address those underlying factors, right? This is not sexy. It's not like take this pill and it will cure this. It's about trying to sort of audit your own lifestyle and see, right, where are their issues? There are certain things like low iron and low thyroid. Well, that needs to be diagnosed. You need to have blood tested, need to, be, need to have a look. And if that's the case, then yes, correcting those, which may be through medication, will address uh, the, the shedding. But we know that it can be quite perturbing. You, you see people, they go in the shower and there's lots of hairs at the, at the bottom of the, of the shower. They run the comb or the brush through their hair. They're experiencing um, a, a lot of hair loss. So it can be uh, very disconcerting uh, for a lot of people. In the short term, um, we can also, we have, you know, do try sometimes using uh, stimulation therapy like minoxidil to try and uh, assist whilst we're waiting for the uh, underlying cause to, be, uh, to settle. Uh, and we've had some uh, experience with that and some success with that. So the issue is though, you know, will, you know, misdiagnosis, will we misdiagnose androgenic alopecia for TE or vice versa? And I think that's why it's important that when you're, if you're suffering from hair loss, if you're having issues with hair loss, make sure you consult with someone that is able to diagnose and manage this condition properly. So I hope that gives you a rough sort of uh, overview on telogen effluvium or TE. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next episode. Take care.